Structural engineers are responsible for designing and engineering the structures that we use every day, such as buildings, bridges, and skyscrapers, so they stand up and don't fall down during heavy windstorms or earthquakes. But what do structural engineers actually do? What's their actual analysis and design process? How do they make structures stand up and resist earthquakes? And how do they work with architects and contractors to make the building project come to life? I'm Matt Picardo and I'm a licensed structural engineer in California and I'm gonna be taking you through an example project from start all the way to finish. There are four main phases that structural engineers go through in order to design a building. It's the analysis, then it's design, then it's the drawings, and then it's construction. How projects usually start off is that there's an architect that has a vision for a building. They draw some sketches of it, and they have some blueprints or floor plans, and they give it to the structural engineer, and they ask the structural engineer, okay, how are we going to make this work? How are we gonna make this a reality? How are we gonna make this stand up? Because right now, it's just a sketch on a piece of paper. And this is where the analysis phase begins for the structural engineer. Our goal for this phase is to find all the loads that the building is going to experience and design a skeletal system for the building that can handle all those loads so it doesn't fall down. And there's two types of loads that the building is going to experience. There's gravity and there's lateral loads. Gravity loads, as the name suggests, are all the loads that are pointing towards Earth. To put it simply, this is how much the building weighs. This is the weight of the construction materials. This is the weight of the people that are in it, the furniture and the equipment, all the loads that are inside the building. Structural engineers work with architects to figure out what type of loading these spaces are going to experience. For example, an apartment is going to experience less load than a stadium packed full of people. Once we figure out the loads that the floor spaces are going to experience, in our case, these are apartment buildings, so residential loading, we need to design a skeleton that can take this load. For our case, this is going to be the floor system. We're going to be using a concrete floor slab system that's going to be reinforced with steel bars. And note that there's different types of systems out there. There's wood, there's steel, and there's other types that can be used as well. The concrete floor slab will take all the weight that the apartment units are going to put on it, and it's going to transfer all of those loads into the next structural element of the skeletal system, which are the columns. And the columns are one of the most important structural elements because they're basically holding the floors up, and technically the entire building up. If the columns fail, the building's going to collapse. And besides that, they take all of the building loads and transfer them to the next part of the skeletal system, which are the foundations. Once all the building loads go to the foundations, the foundations transfer the building loads to the soil. By completing this load path, getting all the building loads to the soil, that's how we know that the building is going to be stable and stand up. The second type of loads are lateral loads. Unlike gravity loads, these are the loads that are applying horizontal loads or loads that are trying to push the building over, tip the building over, such as wind, earthquakes, or even tsunamis. Structural engineers find out how strong wind and earthquake forces are in the area through research-driven database websites, and then apply those loads to the building. And we're going to need a separate skeletal system in order to resist these lateral loads. These are often in the forms of braces or walls in order to keep the structure stable during earthquakes or heavy winds. So looking at our structure, we don't want to put braces or walls on the exterior because this is a high rise and it's going to be blocking the apartment views. It might also mess up the exterior architecture because there's going to be window glazing throughout the exterior of the building. So since this building is tall and slender, we're going to be using a structural concept used in nature the bamboo core. Bamboo is also tall and slender, and it's still flexible and strong enough to resist wind forces through its hollow bamboo core. And looking at our floor plan, we already have a bunch of openings in the middle of our building. We have those elevators and the stairs that are essentially floor openings. So let's make the walls around these floor openings our bamboo core by making those walls out of concrete. This will be our concrete core for the building, and you'll often see these in skyscraper and high-rise projects. This solution works with the architecture and will help stabilize it during heavy windstorms and earthquakes. Great, now that we've defined the skeletal system of the building and know the loads that are going into the building, now it's time for the actual design phase. During the design phase, we're going to design 
how large the members are. So we'll figure out how large the floors need to be, how large the columns need to be, how large the foundations need to be. We also need to figure out how much steel reinforcement we need to put in those members and how all of those structural elements, the floors, columns, foundations, how all of those are going to be connected to each other. Think of this phase as designing the muscular system of the building that connects everything together now that the skeletal system is in place. Structural engineers use their expertise in mathematics, physics, and material engineering principles in order to help them design. For example, concrete is strong in compression. You can think of our concrete core walls as a stack of Legos. When you push down on it, for the most part, it's not gonna go anywhere. But it's super weak in tension, meaning that if you apply any lateral loads to it, such as winds or earthquakes, the concrete is going to fail. But if we add reinforcing to it, let's say duct tape for our Lego example, then the concrete won't collapse. That's why we need to add steel bars in order to reinforce the concrete to make up for its weakness. When we're designing, we often use design equations, software, structural analysis models, spreadsheets, and or design tables to help us in our design. For our building, we created finite element structural analysis models. These advanced structural analysis models allow us to see where the most heavily stressed areas are in the building. Here we see a model of our slab and a stress map of where the most heavily stressed areas are in the slab, so we're going to be putting more reinforcing in there. And this is a model of the concrete core walls and we're applying earthquake forces to it. And we're making sure that the concrete core walls are not only strong enough to handle all of those forces, but we also wanna make sure that the building doesn't sway too much or else the people living in the building will get motion sickness whenever the wind blows. If you're finding these structural engineering topics interesting and want to explore these concepts a bit more, I highly encourage you to check out today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is my favorite way to level up my math, science, and computer science skills because it's so interactive. I learn the best by doing, by seeing visuals, and by knowing that the subjects I'm learning about actually have a real world practical purpose, just like structural engineering. And Brilliant has thousands of lessons with new ones added each month. And one of my favorites is their scientific thinking course. You can learn more about engineering concepts that we've been talking about, such as structural stability in a fun and interactive way. For example, here I'm trying to make the bridge stable. And these lessons actually stick because it's so visual and interactive. You're not just memorizing equations. They're also broken down into understandable parts with simple explanations. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash mathcardle or click on the link in the description below. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. After the design is done, now we move on to the drawings or blueprints phase. The structural engineers have their designs in their software and spreadsheets, but they can't just give those to the contractor in order for them to build it. The contractors need instructions or drawings or blueprints in order to build the structure. So this is where the structural engineer gets all their designs and puts it on paper or structural drawings. And in these drawings, they're going to have the final structural designs, how thick the slabs are, how big the columns are, how much steel reinforcing is in there, how to connect all of the structural elements together, all the things needed to make the structure safe and stable. Once the drawings are finalized and approved and we got the building permit, then construction starts. Structural engineers don't actually build or construct the building during this phase. Those are the contractors, but they do play a critical role during the construction phase. They often visit the construction site and provide guidance and direction to the contractor in order to make sure that the building is being constructed in accordance with the structural drawings. They answer any structural design questions and they provide recommendations and solutions for when things change out in the field. For example, a column might have been placed in the wrong location and now the concrete's already poured. So the structural engineer will probably instruct them to drill and epoxy or glue new steel into the existing concrete so they can construct the column in the right place. Thanks for making it to the end of the video and if you enjoyed it, please make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below. It helps out the channel a lot and helps me make create more videos. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.